the girl chose to walk with the emperor and decided to prove to him that she was a worthy heir. While she was thinking about when her father would come, a boy approached her and began to say that only members of the imperial family were allowed to be in this place. He did not know her. His mother, the Marquise Silvia Ilos, formerly Silvia Balarov, approached them. She was Eustace's half-sister and the only remaining representative of the imperial family in the empire. The reason why the former princess remained in the palace was that she quickly took the side of the current emperor. She had two sons, and the eldest, Logan Elos, was prophesied to be the next emperor, since the second son, Leom, was still too young. Philomel did not have the opportunity to meet him officially. The younger son turned to his mother because she said that the princess was not beautiful. The girl understood how she was being talked about. She had heard that he would be an emperor. But, if they quarreled now and then, it was revealed that she was a fake princess. She would be in trouble. They started to leave, but Philomel stopped them. They must greet her in the proper way. Miss Elos had once been a princess herself. Her distant relatives greeted her in the same way the woman greeted Philomel, but it was not enough for the girl. She made her kneel down. Philomel realized that the woman was hurt by this. She had once been a princess herself, and since there was no empress, the social circles belonged to her. She could ignore it, but she did not want such a life. However, at that time, the emperor came, who could not understand why they made such a fuss. The girl said that Leom claimed his brother would become the next emperor. Could he really eliminate her and become emperor? The Elos family began to make excuses that this did not happen, that she most likely misheard or misunderstood. The woman began to say that Philomel was lying because she was not severely punished. The girl wondered if the emperor would believe her, since she had no proof, and she was afraid that he would be disappointed in her. The girl began to cry. However, the emperor said that she was not the one who could lie, and if so, he was no better because he himself had heard everything. The emperor told Sylvia that the reason he left her was because she was not worthy of getting her hands dirty, and if she heard him, she should take her children away from here before he took their heads off their shoulders, because today he also did not want to shed blood. Thus, the three left the garden forever. Starting from that day, his majesty took too much alcohol. She brought him tea in bed every morning. Although he was always burning the count with his eyes, he finished his tea. She suggested that he take a walk. He realized that she was choosing dates when he was free and agreed. She realized that by talking to him like this from time to time, the emperor would begin to pay attention to her strengths, talking about her achievements. The girl stumbled and fell. The man took her in his arms. She was uncomfortable with him. She asked to be put on the ground because it was hard for him. But the man said he looked like a dying man and continued to carry her. The girl fell asleep in his arms. Countess Delis said that the girl woke up very early every day so that her husband could enjoy tea in the morning. And she heard that the empress also liked to walk in the garden like time passed unnoticed. She is already ten years old. Nazar worried to this day that the girl hates him. He got down on his knees and begged for forgiveness until her resentment subsided. This situation was very disturbing to his soul. The girl did not know what to do with it. She still remembers that day. The day she first saw Nazar, and the moment their eyes met. She fell in love with him at first sight. Her beloved sank into her soul much more than the image she had built in her head. She liked his kindness, which her parents could not give her. However, she did not think that this relationship and feelings were fake. She asked him to get up from his knees. If he doesn't love her, as in the book, there is nothing she can do about it. She can't hate him for that. She made him repeat after her the words, I am a valuable person. I am not someone's property. I will live the way I want to live. One day, Nazar will meet Alantia, and she will no longer be around, perhaps because the atmosphere was less tense. But that evening with him was different from the others. She realized that she had memorized the prophecy, so she decided to burn the book. As soon as she thought that the book had burned to ashes, she breathed a sigh of relief. But something incredible happened. She was reborn. She asked the court magician, Humphrey, if he was good at magic. He was not sure that he knew everything, but he was better. In the imperial palace, there were things that really interested her. Predicting the future is one of the many rituals among the countless possibilities of mages. She asked, what about priests? But the same applies to them because even the predictions of the high priest deviate by 30% from reality. She began to read the great magician Lakin. It turned out that he was her own father. It was written in a prophecy. After the first escape, her refuge was the Tower of Magicians. The owner of this place was her father. He helped her and did not leave her. At that moment, however, the thief Philomel began to borrow his power to commit crimes, and Lakin stopped protecting his daughter. That is why Philomel met with the Angel of Death. In the book, it was said that her father really tried to protect her maybe even a little bit, but he loves her. A lot of water has flowed since that day. Two years passed. The girl came to the emperor and was surprised that he had hardly touched alcohol lately. She asked what kind of documents he had. The man said that they were connected with the holiday, in honor of the founding of the state. The date was coming up. 
she told the emperor that the most important thing at the holiday was a memorable speech, because you need to watch your tongue. He said that it was nothing to worry about, she could just go out and say a few words. She agreed, but she had a phrase in her head that her tongue was her enemy, and she had to do it properly. She decided to think positively. To say a thing is not such a big deal. This is a chance. People inside the palace no longer treat her with disdain, but outside the palace, everyone considers her an immature princess. On the day of the holiday, she thought she was in trouble because there were many more people than she expected. It was time to change her reputation for the better and show the true face of the heir apparent. Unfortunately, her loudspeaker broke and no one could hear her. She was very scared because she was afraid to spoil everything. The emperor took her in his arms and brought her to his loudspeaker. In her head, she was thinking that she was not a child and was afraid of what people would think. The girl began to perform and people realized that her behavior did not correspond to the rumors. Everyone was surprised that the rumors about the heiress were just fiction. At dinner, Philomel asked about the performance. Her husband liked it, so she decided to ask for a recognition ring as a reward. But he said it was too early. It scared the girl because when she grows up, Alencia will appear. The emperor wondered why she wanted the ring so much. To which the girl replied that the ring symbolized the right of the heir to the throne. She had put in so much effort, but if she didn't get the ring by then, she would have no choice but to completely change her plan. Her thoughts were interrupted by Mrs. Dellis who said that his majesty wanted to see her. He said he would send her valuable elite tea leaves as a gift. She said to tell him that she was not feeling well, but in that case, the emperor would come to her himself. The girl wondered why so suddenly, but the conversation was important. What the hell is going on? The girl asked Mrs. Dellis if his majesty would still like to come, to tell him that she was sleeping because she did not want to see him. Now suddenly she heard someone coming. She thought it was the countess, and it was useless to persuade her. She would not budge, but she was wrong. It was the emperor but she didn't even want to look at him. The man did not understand why she wanted the ring so badly. She was his opponent even without it. But if she wanted it so badly, he would give it to her in three years, when she was fifteen. The girl did not believe it, and asked if it was true. He said yes, especially since by then it would not put a lot of strain on her body. Countess Delos came for the girl because she had only a few hours before her debut. She thought that her outfit would be too pretentious. However, the lady noticed that she always dressed neatly and made her debut a little earlier than other girls. But even now she looked like a well-mannered lady. The other girls who attended the celebration complimented Nazar, saying that he was handsome and modest, and that her majesty had nothing to worry about when she had such a perfect groom by her side. There was an old custom that the first dance partner on the day of the debut should be married. Married? The emperor told his daughter that this was a myth and that she should not dwell on it. Everyone was amazed by the beauty and elegance of her majesty, and Nazar grew up to be a wonderful young man. Philomel approached Nazar and asked him to dance. The girl thought she could be Alencia's replacement as long as she wanted before she left this place. And in the year she turned fifteen, His Majesty, as promised, gave her a recognition ring. The man said that since the girl did not have sacred powers, he endowed the ring with his own. She must use it with caution, as she promised. That day, she finally put on her finger what she needed, but could not, at the same time, carry out the entire escape plan. She did not know where Alencia was. If we leave everything as it is, it will turn out that Alencia is the real princess. But when she leaves the palace now, His Majesty will most likely start looking for her. But whatever she chooses, Catherine, her biological mother, will still die. She needed to put aside her sad thoughts. Now she needs to do what she can. Sometime later, at a social celebration, the girls thanked her for saving the lives of their relatives. Nazar could not take his eyes off her all evening. Even Kenny noticed. He was very jealous of the girl but did not tell others. The emperor took the girl away from the party. She said that she did not learn any new information today. But she told him that Mrs. Lu San said that the countess's condition improved after she drank medicine from the elite. It seems that an epidemic has begun in the south. Shouldn't they provide medicine to that part of the country? The man said that tomorrow he would give orders to the interested parties. Moreover, the Marquis of Land recently had a daughter, and there are rumors that Count Varsa will soon become related to a foreign ambassador. The man thanked the girl for her work. The man remembered that her birthday was coming up and asked her what she wanted as a present. But she said that the ring he gave her last year was enough. If she refuses once, out of politeness, as she has done every time, instead of a gift, she wants him to fulfill her request in a temporary palace which is located in Justina. The man decided to give it to her, but the girl just wanted to spend the spring days with him there, because when she was there, she could not take her eyes off the incredible scenery. She hoped that he would agree because then she would finally be able to find his real daughter. He said it was not difficult, and he would go without any problems. She remembered that this day was also considered the day of the Empress's death, 
so she was afraid that it would be difficult for him to leave the palace. He said he would resolve political negotiations in the temporary palace and tell the ambassadors to come there. But the fact that she managed to persuade His Majesty to go to that place can already be called a small victory. She did a lot to make people hate her. A disguised prophecy, a little bit of jewelry, and she had saved a little bit of gold coins upon arrival in Utica. During the time when the Emperor will negotiate, she will bring the girl and return the place that belongs to her. That's when her role as crown princess will end. When she looks at the ring, she immediately has the urge to run away. But she suppresses it to save her and her mother's lives. She has many reasons for this. But after reading the prophecy, she learned something else. And she realized that all people have their own history, which they hide so much. His Majesty, who did not hear a soul in the Empress, and Alencia, who, in her opinion, lived happily in However, her childhood was almost the same as Philomel's. Perhaps if the girl had revealed the truth, these two would have been able to be happy. A little earlier, on the eve of her birthday, the girl was walking along the shore of the lake. Nazar followed her and invited her to tea. But she refused because she had recently been at a tea party with His Majesty and asked him to find another interlocutor. Surprised that wherever he went, everyone knew him. The expression on Nazar's face is most likely that he feels remorse for not being able to fulfill his role as a groom. But he could not worry. He will be the perfect partner for the princess. When Alencia appears, the emperor invited the girl to his place. She was surprised because she had already had dinner and dessert, and here was a whole cake. If everything was as usual, he would have already talked about work. Why was he only looking at her silently? It was a difficult atmosphere for the girl. The man gave her a gift, a model of a ship, and now she understood what he was waiting for. He said that this is a miniature. The real one is still in the process of being made. It will take more time to build than he expected. It was the first time His Majesty had given her anything other than what she wanted. She thought that there was nothing wrong with him being hers. His Majesty could never figure it out. It is a wonderful feeling to be congratulated, but the birthday of his real daughter is tomorrow. The next day, near Lake Utena, the banquet in honor of her birthday would be held only after negotiations. The Countess was worried about whether she would be okay without rest. The woman saw how much the girl liked watching the people and said that she would be a great empress in the future. However, by that time she will not be here. The Countess came to the girl and said that they had found the place she was looking for, but Martin added that they could not drive to it. They would have to walk, but in order not to be overwhelmed, he could call the residents to the palace. He was sent to protect her. She tried different methods to stop the emperor from replacing him with another knight. A girl approached them, and an image immediately popped into Philomel's head that she had read many times. Blue eyes, cheeks like two peaches, fair skin. A girl standing in front of her like two drops of water, similar to Empress Isabella. She found her. It was Alencia. The girl asked to see her house. The girl was embarrassed, but said if the princess wanted to, she would be happy to show it to her. They came to her house and the girl introduced Philomel to her mother. The woman was so frightened that she dropped the plate and asked the girl to leave because she did not want to be a kind of entertainment for noble people. Philomel wanted to talk to her in private, a woman who could not become empress herself, and switched places with Alencia. And unable to accept what she had done, she took out her resentment on Alencia. But in the end, this woman opened the door of her heart to a child whose kindness knew no bounds. If she had waited another year, she would have confessed to everything herself and then would have died at the hands of the emperor. Philomel said that she was going to take her daughter to the emperor. Her goal was to reunite the daughter and father who lived without knowing each other's existence. But the woman said that Alencia was still her daughter, even though she did not give birth to her. Alencia will decide for herself whether to have it or not after she learns the truth. So sweet. Alencia was loved even by her non-blood parents in comparison. The girl asked her mother how she lived all these years, and she replied that of course she lived luxuriously in the imperial palace. Since her mother was not interested in her life, she was not interested in her either. When the truth came out, the woman knew better than anyone else that they were both in danger. Philomel took Alencia. They met. The girl was surprised that they were both named after flowers. And if you think about it, her name is the same as the princess's. In a moment, she learned that she was a princess. The countess was in a state of thought ever since she saw this child. She could not get it out of her mind that she was a copy of the dead empress. But how is this possible? Philomel thought that the girl was worried because she took her away without saying a word, but now that she was silent, she had the impression that she was looking at a completely different person. As soon as His Majesty sees Alencia, he will immediately realize that she is his daughter. Philomel brought the girl to the palace. The emperor was still in negotiations, but the girl insisted on being called. Love the Manhua? Subscribe for more. Your support makes it all possible. Hit subscribe now!